with Roots and Wings Furniture and today we are going to build a barn door. Now here's the deal, you can build a custom sized really spiffy barn door for less than $200 and it will completely transform the look of your room, your house, everything. And it's really not that hard. So I'm going to show you how. You ready? First things first, let's talk about what kind of wood you're going to use to build your barn door. So here's the deal. The more rustic barn wood, rough kind of wood you want to use, while it looks really cool, it's actually harder to work with. So for this barn door, we're going to use select pine. This is um, just from the, the lumber store. I bought it at Home Depot and it is really nice pine. It's really straight. Generally speaking, um, there are not a lot of knots. There's, there is grain, but it's really nice and clean. And that's going to help us not only give us a really nice finished product, um, but also it's just going to be a lot easier to work with. So if it's in your budget, you can spend a little bit more, get a really nice cut of wood. Um, this is the kind of stuff you're going to want to look for. Let me show you one other trick anytime you go to the lumber yard or the hardware store. You gotta know how to get a straight piece of wood and especially we're building something like a door. This is really important. You can't have a piece of wood that's halfway bent over or that's crooked to one side or the other. It'll mess up your whole design. So let me show you a quick trick. I do this in the store every time I'm buying wood. All you do is you grab your piece. If it looks nice, looks nice, we're good. Now. Sight your wood and all you do is stretch it out in front of you like this get your eyeball up on the top close one eye make sure your line is straight down to the bottom you'll be able to see really clearly if you if it um, is crooked to one side or the other if it's got a little angle if it's warped this is how you see it you'll be able to see it really quickly and it's deceiving you can pull that board out and think oh this is a nice board it's so straight as soon as you sight it you'll know if it's actually good or not. So sight your boards, it only takes a second. Sight your boards before you even put them on your cart and you'll be ready to go. So we're gonna work with select pine for this one. Um, it's totally up to you what you wanna work with. This is what we're gonna do. And like I say, um, it's a little more expensive, but it's well worth it in the prep. So let's get started. Step two is to measure and cut. I've got a whole blog post explaining just how to measure your space for the right kind of barn door. So you can refer to that. So we are going to measure, measure twice, cut once. And I'm just going to cut each piece of wood here on my chop saw. For a full supply list of everything you will need to create this awesome finish, check out the description below this video. There we go. Rinse and repeat. Okay, step three. Once your boards are all cut, we lay out the boards in the order that you want them to make sure you like the design. So what I'm gonna do is just make sure that everything lines up, make sure I like the grain and the pattern that I see, make any adjustments if needed. And then once I'm happy with it, I'm just gonna add a bead of glue to each board here. And I'm gonna do it about half at a time. My clamps aren't big enough to cover my entire door, so I'm gonna do about half the door. Um, I'll do the other half in a separate section, and then we'll get it all put together. Okay, and then tighten your clamps. They don't need to be too tight. The trick is to make sure though your boards stay nice and flat while your clamps are tight. So it tightens it up and keeps the boards just exactly where you want them. Once your clamps are all attached, go back over this with a wet paper towel and get off any excess glue. You wanna do that while the glue is wet because if you let it dry and sand it off, it can show up later in the stain process. Let it dry until your glue is dry uh, and then we'll work on putting the other section together. Okay, what we've got now are two panels that are all glued together and dry. What I'm gonna do is add a bead of glue here, line this door up, and then we're gonna go ahead and add our cross beams, and that is going to hold it all together. 
I'm gonna line up and measure the cross beams so that I can cut. And on this end, this is actually the top of the door. We're gonna have two cross beams right next to each other. And that has to do with the hardware. Um, and then one piece at the bottom. Line this up. <clears throat> okay, my pieces are measured and cut. So we are just going to glue each of these. and then nail it with one and a quarter inch nails. Okay, now that these are glued and nailed, these will act as our clamps to hold everything together. Once this is dry, this will be nice and solid. The last part of the building is just to add my cross beam. Again, this is completely up to you in the design that you want to have. I like to just run mine across from top to bottom um, and I line it up and mark my angle and then just give it a cut. Just to do make sure that wherever your cross piece goes, it won't interfere with the hardware. So I'm just gonna give this a quick cut. I will glue it just like we did these, nail it down, and then we have a built barn door. Then we'll come back in and sand it, stain it, and it'll be ready to install. Our barn door is built, and the next step is to sand it down nice and smooth. Pay special attention to anywhere you might have gotten some glue dried on um, and smooth out the edges or any of the cut lines and marks. So, I'm gonna sand this. I'm gonna use my pad sander with 120 grit sandpaper. Just give it a good sanding and then we'll be ready for staining. All right, I've got it all sanded and dusted off and now we're ready to stain. I am gonna use my very favorite color stain. It is a custom mix of general finishes, antique oak, and walnut. That's about a 50-50 mix, which is what I've got mixed up here in this can. I'm also using a stain pad. Um, since we have such a large surface, we're going to stain. A stain pad really helps you get the stain on there nice and quick. I've got a rag handy just to wipe off any excess, um, and I'm wearing gloves so it doesn't get all over my hands. Let's just get going here. trick with water-based stain is just to get a lot on there. Keep a wet edge um, as you're working and that will help you get a nice even finish. You'll notice I like to work in sections so I can make sure I catch any drips, I catch any um, streaks or anything like that. This stain only takes two to four hours to dry so I'm gonna let it sit here and dry before I flip it over and stain the other side. And then there's two things I like to do once I get the door where it's going to be installed. I like to put the hardware in after it's been installed already because you can kind of see exactly where you want the handle to go, what height, um, make sure everything fits and works. So I'm going to do that, like I say, uh, later once I get this up to where it goes. The other thing I'm gonna do is actually do the top coat um, after it's been installed. And the reason for that is the same. Once we've got the door hanging up, it's much easier to access both sides of the door. I'm just going to use a water-based top coat and only give it one coat. So it's okay to do that inside. Um, and it's just kind of an easier process I find when it's hanging up and already installed. You could definitely do it out in the shop um, before you take it inside. Um, like I say, I like to just use a water-based top coat and I think just one coat is fine for a door. It just helps um, make it easier to dust and keep clean. All right, there we go. So this section here is pretty much done. So that's it. We've built our barn door. You can see it's really not hard to make a fantastic looking rustic door just like this. So I'm gonna finish working on this one and I'll show you a picture when it's all hung up. 
Thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out my website, rootsandwingsfurniture.com for more painting tips and tricks and DIY. Also, subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss a thing. Click the button below.